ESO has just released a stunning new image of a field of stars towards the constellation of Carina. This striking view is ablaze with a flurry of stars of all colors and brightness, some of which glow against a backdrop of gas and dust clouds. A complex nebula created by previous violent ejections surrounds an unusual star in the middle of this field. Astronomers have discovered that this star has a companion. Interactions in this double star system, surrounded by a dusty disk, may be the engine fueling the star's remarkable nebula. Hello and welcome to this episode of the ESOcast. My name is Gaty Hussain. I'm standing in this time for Dr. J who is on vacation. Today we will explore a new beautiful ESO image that shows a rich field of stars centered on a star called HD 87643. A study using a new set of observations has provided astronomers with the best ever views of this exotic type of star. The image, taken in the direction of the constellation of Carina, shows a dense starscape towards the Carina arm of the Milky Way galaxy. As we come closer, we see the star HD 87643, a so-called BE star, at a distance of 4,900 light-years. The image beautifully shows the extended nebula of gas and dust that reflects the light from the star. The central star's wind appears to have shaped the nebula, leaving bright, ragged tendrils of gas and dust. A careful investigation of these features seems to indicate that there are regular ejections of matter from the star every 15 to 15 The comprehensive years. new study uses three different instruments in ESA's arsenal of telescopes. First, for the big overview, astronomers turn to the Wide Field Imager on the MPG ESO 2.2 meter telescope at the 2,400 meter high La Silla Observatory in Chile. Secondly, the team used ESO's Very Large Telescope, or the VLT, at Paranal. Here, the NACO Adaptive Optics Instrument allowed astronomers to obtain an image of the star free from the blurring effects of the atmosphere. To probe the object even further, the team then obtained an image with the Very Large Telescope Interferometer, or the VLT. The sheer sure. range of the set of observations from the panoramic wide field imager shot to the fine details of the VLTI observations corresponds to a zoom in factor of 60,000 between the two extremes. With this data, the astronomers found out that HD 87643 has a companion star located at about 50 times the Earth-Sun distance and is embedded in a compact dust shell. The two stars probably orbit each other in a period between 20 and The presence and of this companion years. could provide an explanation for the regular ejection of matter from HD 87643 that forms its amazing nebula. As the companion star moves in a highly elliptical or oval-shaped orbit, it regularly comes very close to HD 87643 and triggers an ejection of stellar material. This celestial tango may be what generates the gorgeous nebula. Once again, science has helped us explore and explain the beauty of the universe. This is Gaty Hussain signing off for the ESOcast. Join us again next time. In the framework of the International Year of Astronomy 2009, ESO has launched a new project aimed at connecting the sky as seen by the unaided eye with that seen by hobby and professional astronomers. The project, called Giga Galaxy Zoom, reveals three amazing ultra-high resolution images of the night sky that online stargazers can zoom in on and explore in an incredible level of detail. The reward is the most breathtaking dive ever made into our galaxy, linking the sky seen by all with the cosmos studied by astronomers. This is the ESOcast, cutting-edge science and life behind the scenes of ESO, the European Southern Observatory. In today's ESOcast, we will explore the unique and amazing Giga Galaxy Zoom project, which reveals the whole night sky as it appears with the unaided eye from one of the darkest deserts on Earth. The project allows users to zoom in on a rich region of the Milky Way with a magnification offered by a hobby telescope, and then to go one step further, using the power of a professional telescope to explore details of an iconic nebula. 
Most of the photographs comprising the three Giga Galaxy zoom images were taken from La Silla and Paranal, two of ESO's observing sites in Chile. The wonderful quality of the images is a testament to the splendor of the night sky at these ESO sites, which are the most productive astronomical observatories in the world. The first image, taken by the renowned French writer and astrophotographer Serge Brunier, aims to present the sky as people have experienced it the world over, though in the far greater detail offered by top-notch stargazing conditions and incorporating the view from both hemispheres. Brunier spent several weeks capturing the sky with a digital camera, mostly from ESO observatories at La Silla and Paranal in Chile. To cover the full arc of the Milky Way, Brunier also made a week-long trip to La Palma, one of the Canary Islands, to photograph the northern skies. The final image, the result of 120 hours of observations, provides a magnificent 800 million pixel panorama of the whole Milky Way. This 360 degree panoramic image covering the entire celestial sphere reveals the cosmic landscape that surrounds our tiny blue planet. The plane of our Milky Way galaxy, which we see edge on from our perspective on Earth, cuts a luminous swathe across the image almost as if we were looking at the Milky Way from the outside. The second image was captured by another renowned astrophotographer named Stéphane Guizard. Stefan is also the chief optician at the ESO Paranal Observatory, where he is responsible for making sure that the very large telescope has the best possible optical quality. This second image directly benefits from the dark and cloudless sky at Paranal, one of the best observing sites on the planet, and from Stefan's professional expertise as an optical engineer specializing in telescopes. To snap a photographic mosaic of the central parts of our galactic home, Stefan relied on a 10cm aperture hobby telescope coupled with a CCD camera. The final result produced by Stefan, together with ESO's image experts, is a color image of the Milky Way containing more than 340 million pixels. The image combines about 1,200 photos for a total exposure time of at least 200 The resulting image hours. beautifully exhibits the sky, spanning several constellations from Sagittarius to Scorpius, an area that includes the galactic center, the famous lagoon and Trifid nebulae on the left, and the colorful Antares and Rho Ophiuchus region on the right. The third image of the Giga Galaxy Zoom project illustrates the power of professional astronomy. It covers a one degree field of view, or about two times the width of the full moon, using the wide field imager attached to the MPG ESO 2.2 meter telescope at the ESO La Silla Observatory. This camera has already created several of the most iconic pictures produced by ESO. The professional image is a zoom into the attractive and intriguing Lagoon Nebula. Scattered dark patches within this 100 light-year wide nebula are huge clouds of gas and dust collapsing under their own weight. Soon they will give birth to clusters of young, glowing stars. These three stunning images allow for unique exploration of a magnificently detailed cosmic environment from the scale seen by the unaided eye into the astronomer's realm. Enjoy this dive into the starry depths of our Milky Way, from the eye to the telescope.
Today, at an international exoplanet conference, the team who built the High Accuracy Radial Velocity Planet Searcher, better known as HARPS, the spectrograph for ESA's 3.6-meter telescope, reports on the incredible discovery of more than 30 new exoplanets, cementing HARPS's position as the world's foremost exoplanet hunter. Hello and welcome to the ESOcast. In this episode, we have another major exoplanet discovery coming to you from ESO's La Silla Observatory. And we're not just talking about one exoplanet, we're talking about no less than 30. It's exoplanets galore. Including these new results, data from HARPS have led to the discovery of more than 75 exoplanets in 30 different planetary systems. In particular, thanks to its amazing precision, the search for small planets, those with a mass of a few times that of the Earth, known as super-Earths and Neptune-like planets, has been given a dramatic boost. HARPS has facilitated the discovery of 24 of the 28 planets known with masses below 20 Earth masses. As with the previously detected super-Earths, most of the new low-mass candidates reside in multi-planet systems, with up to five planets per system. In 1999, ESO launched a call for opportunities to build a high-resolution, extremely precise spectrograph for the ESO 3.6-meter telescope at La Silla, Chile. Michelle Mayor from the Geneva Observatory led a consortium to build HARPS, which was installed in 2003 and was soon able to measure the back and forward motions of stars by detecting small changes in a star's radial velocity, as small as 3.5 km per hour, or a steady walking pace. Such a precision is crucial for the discovery of exoplanets. The radial velocity method, which detects small changes in the radial velocity of a star as it wobbles slightly under the gentle gravitational pull from an unseen exoplanet, has been the most prolific method in the search for exoplanets. In return for building the instrument, the HARPS Consortium was awarded 100 observing nights per year over a five-year period. Now this time was used to carry out one of the most ambitious systematic searches for exoplanets so far implemented worldwide by measuring the radial velocities of hundreds of stars that might... The program soon system. proved very successful. Using HARPS, Mayor's team discovered, among others, the first super-Earth around Mu Ara, the trio of Neptunes around HD 69830, Gliese 581d, the first extrasolar planet in the habitable zone of a small star, and the lightest exoplanet ever detected around a normal star, Gliese 581e. More recently, they found a potentially lava-covered world, with density similar to that of the Earth's. These observations have given astronomers great insight into the diversity of planetary systems, and they've helped us to understand how they might form. The HARPS consortium was very careful in their selection of targets, with several sub-programs aimed at looking for planets around solar-like stars, low-mass dwarf stars, or stars with a lower metal content than the Sun. Although it was thought that giant planets couldn't form around low-mass stars, the HARPS team has found several of them. The number of exoplanets known around low-mass stars, so-called M-dwarfs, has also dramatically increased, including new super-Earth candidates. Although the first phase of the observing program is now officially concluded, two new programs have been started. And the team still expects to make many new discoveries from the first five years of data. There is no doubt that HARPS will continue to lead the field of exoplanet discovery, and especially pushing towards the detection of Earth-type planets. This is Dr. J signing off for the ESOcast. Join me again next time for another cosmic adventure.